Hey readers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire Books, and today I want to review an old favorite that I recently reread, and that would be Julian by Gore Vidal. So Julian is a work of historical fiction, and it focuses on letters that are being sent back and forth between these two aging pagan philosophers whose names are Libanius and Priscus. Both of them are reminiscing about the life of the Emperor Julian also known as Julian the Apostate, who was the last overtly pagan, non-Christian emperor of the Roman Empire before Christianity became pretty much the official imperial religion for the rest of time. Libanius and Priscus are reading through and discussing Julian's memoirs, which that's not an actual document that exists, if only. But the memoir and their letters about it and their comments on it give us a window into this time period and into what was happening from a few different perspectives and how everyone felt about it. So plot-wise, if you know history and the history of the Roman Empire, you are aware that Julian was not emperor for very long, he died quite quickly. And that his mission to bring paganism back to the Roman Empire as its primary religion was bound to fail. But knowing the history isn't really the point of this book. And I think what makes it so beautiful is how it reflects on and, and meditates on the passage of time and the loss of things that mean a lot to you and sort of thoughts about what might have been had things turned out differently. So one of the things that makes this book so amazing is that all of the characters have some pretty glaring imperfections, but you like them anyway. Julian's a little bit gullible. He really likes sort of the mystical end of things. And his philosophical mentors think that this is a little bit silly, especially Priscus, who is completely a crotchety old man who you somehow like anyway. And then you have Libanius, who's a famous creature who sees his own reputation fading and his own legacy fading. And he's trying to cope with that as well. Even some of the more antagonistic figures in the book, such as Constantius, who spends most of Julian's life deciding whether to kill him or make him heir to an empire. Or Eusebia, who's Constantius' wife who can't have children and is very jealous. Even those characters end up being somewhat sympathetic and you find ways to understand where they're coming from and what is happening for them during this time. I think the very best aspect of the book and what makes it a five-star read for me is the way that Gore Vidal plays with history and with ideas about what really happened, people's experiences of what happened, and how accounts can differ even among people who are around at the same time. As someone who has done a lot of historical research, uh, I find this really funny because, you know, there's so much about history that you can, you can never really touch, you can never really know. And it's just such a human field of study. Seeing Gore Vidal play with it this way is just delightful. You know, Julian will say something in his memoir and one of the old guys writing about it will be like, that did, that did not happen. Or they'll disagree about the characterization of someone or they'll add information that Julian didn't know. And so they change how you read what happened in his memoir using information that he himself did not have. And I think that Gore Vidal really knows that this is what he's doing. You can really read in this book that he's somebody who enjoyed this period of history, who spent a lot of time reading about it, and who's really just relishing it throughout the book. And that's something that, I mean, I love late antiquity. I like my later Roman emperors a lot. It was so refreshing just to feel like I had a kindred spirit and somebody who also really likes these later emperors, later imperial politics, and especially Julian, for whom I have a significant soft spot. This book also does a lot for me emotionally, not just in terms of me being able to appreciate the way that it's playing with history and historical work, which I feel very attached to, um, but also because I'm an atheist. Gore Vidal was also a secular author and the feelings of loss that these pagan philosophers are experiencing as Christianity becomes the dominant cultural and political force in their world is something that I think that Gore Vidal actually feels on a deep level, there's something really painful and wistful about what these old men have to say, these guys who are, you know, relics of an age gone by. 
And there's also a sense of fear and of being pushed around. And I love Christian history. Uh, my PhD is in ancient Christianity. I adore it. I was so happy to see Basil of Caesarea and Gregory of Nazianzus show up in this book. It was really charming. Um, and, you know, this is a historical period that I love. And I like the whole cast of characters. But also, as somebody who has been afraid to tell people what my non-religious perspective is, or who has felt like my own government doesn't have a lot of respect for me or the way that I want to live, man, I really felt what Priscus and Libanius were talking about. I didn't necessarily agree with Julian's idea, which is to, you know, give it right back and, you know, oppress Christians. I'm not really into oppressing anyone. But that theme of, you know, sort of culture war and opposing sides and, you know, the sadness of seeing things that you value get overtaken by people who don't value it the same way, if at all. It really touched me. So for me, this book really just hits a lot of the right notes. It appeals to me as an ancient history enthusiast and as somebody who, you know, I also wonder about my place in the world and the traditions that I do have to pass on. I'm a Latin teacher. I teach in a really healthy program. We teach a lot of Latin students. It's great. But, you know, I also think about the things that I value and whether I'm going to be able to pass them on to people after me and whether the things that I have to teach are even going to mean anything to anybody in the future. And I feel like Julian really touches on all of those things as a novel. There are also moments that are just really funny and really human, and Gore Vidal does a really good job of balancing all of that. I will give two caveats. So again, for me, this is a five-star book. I think there are two things that could diminish your enjoyment of Julian. The first is that Gore Vidal really dove deep into this historical period and he does not give you any cliff's notes. So it really helped me to read the book because I mean, I knew who everybody was. These are basically like my idea of comic book characters that I'm excited about. I love this, this period of history. So be ready to look people up if you are not an enthusiast of the late Roman empire. My dad read this too and he enjoyed it, even though he didn't know who anyone was. So I know that it's still enjoyable, but it might not quite hit that peak for you that it did for me. And the other thing that I will warn you about is that if you are a religious person, specifically a Christian person, this book really drags Christians hard. And to me, it was fairly reflective of how actual Hellenists might have felt at this time period and the kinds of things that they might have chosen to say. I mean, Julian really did dislike Christians and attempted to suppress them just as he felt that the old ways had been suppressed by them. But if your practice of Christianity is something that's near and dear to your heart, I think that it might start to bother you after a while. So I still think the book is worth reading, but be ready to feel uncomfortable if that is a pressure point for you. But that said, Julian is a five star read for me. I absolutely love it. I recommend it to anybody who is looking for a good piece of historical fiction and who especially would like to read about Rome, but not about Julius Caesar all over again. Let's go for Julian Augustus instead. Thanks so much for watching and happy reading.